But when I click pay here, uh, we're going to, it's going to process the payment under that test account and then direct me to a book download link, right? So um, then I can download my asset. Um, I get a nice PDF. Hey, it's Matt with Replit here. Today we're talking about Stripe Checkout. Uh, specifically, I'm gonna show you how to integrate Stripe Checkout with order fulfillment into your Replit apps. So I'm gonna walk through an example app that I built that uses Stripe and order fulfillment, which if you're unfamiliar, that just means the ability to purchase something through Stripe and then receive an asset. So say I'm selling a PDF or it's like a gum road type situation, right? Um, I go and make a purchase uh, and then I receive an asset. Um, we're going to focus on some stuff like subscriptions in a future video, but uh, you should also be able to figure that out from this video. Uh, but what I'll do is walk through the app that I built. I'm going to show you my prompts. I'm going to show you exactly what I supplied to agent and assistant um, so you can kind of like learn how to do this going forward. But I'm also going to give you the template uh, for the app that I created, which you can fork, uh, which you can copy, um, and then use agent and assistant to continue building amazing apps with this as a starting point. Um, we're also going to discuss like the architecture, basically like what's going on here. And this might inform um, how you take this and go build uh, apps in the future. Um, and then one other call out is that this app is like the most basic, basic version of order fulfillment possible. I'm going to call out where you could make improvements, where you could do some additional work here. Um, but let's, uh, let's talk about it. Let's jump right in. Um, so uh, what you'll see here um, is I'm selling my new book, uh, How to Be a Chill Guy or Gal. I'm a chill guy. Um, and uh, there's a, you know, you can read a preview or you can just purchase. You can just give me money. Isn't that amazing? Um, so uh, one thing to call out is that sometimes on certain browsers, uh, Stripe does not like um, the Replit web view. So you'll get a skeleton view here that, that just hangs. Um, that's okay. It still works. Uh, but what you might need to do is go to the development URL. And this is a great plug for a few things. First, uh, we recently added this QR code. Uh, so at any time, right, you can like take your phone, um, open the camera and then like scan this QR code. Uh, and this is pretty neat because Replit development URLs basically um, are live previews of, of your application. You can access these development URLs on any device, right? So like there's my, there's my app and that's pretty cool. Um, so at any time you can scan that QR code, uh, to visit the development URL on maybe your mobile device, because you want to make sure your, your apps are optimized for mobile. But if we open this, um, in a new tab, what you'll see is that the Stripe checkout does load just fine. And this is using a Stripe test environment. So basically what I'll show you today, I'll show you the process for configuring your Stripe app. You can use test mode, which uses uh, dummy API keys essentially. And then you can supply fake credit card information to make their, make sure things work without actually you know spending money. Um, but when I click pay here, uh, we're going to it's going to process the payment under that test account and then direct me to a book download link, right? So um, then I can download my asset. Um, I get a nice PDF, uh, and you can see in the in the URL. This isn't just a success page where people can go and then like steal your PDF, right? There's a session ID, um, and we're going to talk about what's going on the back in the back end uh, to enable this. So the way this app works basically is we have um, our front end, which you just saw. Uh, is, this is written in React with Agent. Um, we have a back end that's like handling API calls, uh, etc. That's written in Express. Um, and in this project, we have a database. And so the database um, is storing those session IDs uh, from the back end. The database is also storing unique download um, IDs. So when you create a purchase with, with Stripe here uh, from the front end, it's communicating with the back end. It's passing the information, the checkout information um, to our application. Basically, our app's saying, oh, uh, Stripe's telling us this person actually paid us money. Sounds great. What we're going to do is we're going to generate a unique URL and store it in our database. And you can actually see that uh, if we go to um, our database in Replit uh, and we check out the uh, orders table. What's happening here is I have a session ID. So again, um, you can see the session ID here um, and the email that's also getting passed back from Stripe, uh, as well as a download URL. Ignore this first one that was from an earlier test. Um, but the last one I supplied the test at test.com email, and you can see we get um, a download URL right here. And what's actually happening, if I inspect this uh, using our developer tools, let me check out the network. 
um, and I click download, what's happening is that this uh, endpoint is hitting our download URL. So basically, we get this unique link, this unique link, right? Nobody's gonna be guessing that, that download URL uh, that allows us to access the asset that we're selling through Stripe. So we have a um, secure, uh, reliable way to transfer digital assets to people uh, without worrying about uh, whether or not, you know, they're just like uh, scraping our site or trying to steal things, um, et cetera. Now, taking this a step further, right, what we could do is, is put a timeout on this download, don't download URL. Basically say, okay, this thing's gonna expire in an hour. That would be another way to, to enhance security. We could integrate with an email provider. We recently added SendGrid support, so that might be a future tutorial, right? Um, to email users, their download URL. That would be really useful. Um, and then, uh, sort of the next leap is adding user authentication. Um, so users can just log in, and we have a secure way of knowing, hey, if the user's logged in and they make this purchase, then we supply them with a download URL. But those are all kind of like more advanced projects. Those are next steps. Um, what we've built here uh, is kind of uh, the MVP, if you will, and it's a really great starting point for your next project. Um, you know, so you can sell everybody your book or your course, uh, etc. But now I want to talk about the actual prompts that I use to to build this application. Um, and so we're going to focus mostly on the agent session. What did I do? Um, so by default, uh, our Stripe app will implement Stripe checkout. Order fulfillment is actually a um, kind of separate feature from Stripe. Uh, and my logic when I'm building with these types of applications, when I'm building with AI is to say, okay, um, what exactly do we need? Maybe even draw out a diagram like this, right? Like what does the architecture of our application look like? Um, and what are the instructions we're gonna give to, to AI? How can we break this problem down such that um, we get it into like small enough little chunks that AI can help us out? And so what I did is say, hey, I wanna build a checkout system for my new book. It should have Stripe checkout. This is what tells Replit to um, add Stripe checkout functionality. And it should allow users to preview the book, right? Um, now, what I wanna do after that is implement a fulfillment system following the instructions here. And when you paste a URL into agent, you have the option to um, uh, basically scrape the site. And so if we go to this documentation, it actually describes how to build an order fulfillment system. Um, and you know the the fulfillment mechanism uses what's called a webhook, uh, and uh, this is this fulfillment function right to fulfill users' orders. And this works because Replit is knows how to build apps using uh, Node, um, but there are also options in in Python and all these other languages which Replit uh, can handle as well. And so by giving Agent access to this documentation, it has the context necessary to implement. A fulfillment mechanism. Um, now, this is definitely pretty advanced, right? Just giving AI documentation saying, hey, do this thing. Uh, what I'd say here, though, is Agent got really close, um, and it actually uh, implemented all of these things uh, quite well. Um, one thing to note is when you build with these types of tools, Agent will ask you, hey, what's your Stripe secret key? And it tells you exactly here how to get that. So um, I'm going to walk through in a second how to set all this stuff up. Uh, and then we needed a webhook signing secret as well. We create the webhook basically for that uh, verification mechanism in the order for fulfillment. That's all right here in the documentation. Now, if you're new to development, if you're new to building with AI, looking at documentation, it can be intimidating. Honestly, like the parallel I like to draw here um, is most people, maybe if you went to college, if you went to school, at some point, you, you've seen a research paper, right? Or you've seen uh, somebody give you some more complex documentation uh, or something. It doesn't matter what it is in your life. The first time I saw a research paper, I was like, dude, what the heck is this? Like, I have no idea what, what I'm looking at, right? Um, and then I had, you know, like someone sit down and tell me like, hey, actually most research papers, you just need to read like the introduction and the conclusion, maybe skim the charts and you can get like 90% of it, right? Um, a step further, like once you actually dig in and you start reading things and you take the time to understand what they're saying, uh, it's not actually that complicated. Maybe there's like complicated language or it's not the most accessible, but I can guarantee you if you take the time to sit down and give yourself permission to be patient that you can understand a lot more than you think you can. And it's the same thing in coding with AI. A lot of it seems complicated. A lot of it seems like really intimidating, but if you give yourself time to sit down and really understand what's going on, um, you can get pretty far.
frankly, I don't really know uh, React or Node very well, but if I look at this, um, I can break this down logically. Const, I know, defines a new variable. Uh, we're requiring express, you know, we're requiring this, uh, some details for our, uh, our app. And then we're creating a new endpoint called a webhook that, you know, is going to do some stuff with Stripe. I'm not even really worried about what it, it does, where if there's a completed checkout session or if uh, payment succeeded, um, we're going to like fulfill the checkout. Logically, that makes sense. And the amazing thing about building with agent and assistant is that we don't actually need to know the details. We just have to like logically um, have a grasp on what what we're doing and directionally know that we're headed uh, the right way. So, you know, taking this and supplying it to agent, right? We're getting uh, our secret key. We're implementing this thing called a webhook. Which, if you don't know what a webhook is, right? Copy and paste webhook into assistant and say, "What is a webhook?" Um, but I told you what a webhook is, like we're going over it. So I provided these values to agent. Uh, you can see we kind of iterated that a bit. There was an error. There were a few errors. It took some back and forth and some debugging. The way that I debug this application is by going through the console, uh, going through the, the, the dev tools, right? If I head to console, I can actually see the calls, you know, that are being made to these different endpoints, the download endpoint, the orders endpoint, um, the checkout endpoint. And I saw that when I was going to this webhook on the on the redirect, basically from Stripe back to my app, I was getting a 400 error. And so I, I started sharing that information with agent. Um, and it took a bit of iteration. You can see there are actually a couple errors I got here uh, until the orders were successfully created. Then I had to go look at the database and I had to understand, okay, were we creating the correct um, the uh, the correct uh, records and authenticating things correctly. And then eventually, I implemented a location to drag and drop my book uh, and have it flow through. And it was sort of this process of iterating and learning about exactly what I was doing, but then more importantly, coming up with an architecture, understanding the architecture and understanding, you know, the details and the pieces of the puzzle. There was like um, basically this back end with the database that I needed to figure out. There was this front end with a webhook in Stripe that I needed to figure out. Um, and now this is all kind of getting in more to like philosophy of building with AI. It's actually uh, unrelated to, to the application, but this is how I build, this is how I debug um, these sorts of problems. Uh, and um, now I want to spend some time, I want to walk through like exactly what you have to do in Stripe to configure this, to make sure that we're like totally squared away and you can replicate this. Um, so what you'll be able to do is just fork this template. Uh, the two um, sort of uh, things you'll need to do after that are, well, three. First, create a database, which you just go to the database tab and you click create new database. Um, and then, you know, you'll have to go to the secrets tab. All of the database info will be filled out once you create a database, but uh, we'll need to supply a Stripe secret key and a Stripe webhook secret. Those two things, we're going to walk through exactly how to do it. Don't freak out that uh, my tokens are in front. This is a test test mode in, in Stripe. So these are kind of fake and I'm going to rotate them anyway. Um, but you'll want to toggle test, test mode in Stripe unless you're building something in production, at which, case, at which point you'll toggle back to production um, <laughs> and your, your people will be able to pay you, et cetera, right? Uh, so your secret key, you can just get from the secret key. Uh, and then webhooks, you just go over to webhook, right? Um, you add an endpoint. Uh, you have to make sure that the endpoint URL matches your app. So if I go into my existing endpoint, um, you can see that my endpoint URL is my development URL. Um, my development URL with API webhook. So if you're using my example, you would use your development URL, which can be found in the web view right here, your dev URL, uh, and slash API slash webhook. Uh, we want to send checkout session completed. Once that's completed, uh, you'll get a webhook secret, which you can you know, manage on your own. You're gonna copy that secret and you're gonna drop it into a Stripe webhook secret. Uh, from there, the app should run exactly the same. Um, you can poke around and actually understand like how the pricing of the app works um, in the, the uh, route because uh, we're creating a product essentially. Uh, and so what you can see here is like uh, in, in our, our server, uh, we're defining a book price, 1999, so uh, about 20 bucks. And in the checkout process, we're passing data from our app from the front end 
to Stripe. And we're saying, hey, let's create a checkout session uh, with this book price. And so, right, like if I change this to 30 bucks, it would flow through on the front end. So you can modify that. I could change the product data, I can change the description, um, all these other details. So the, uh, the Stripe data that we're sending to generate that checkout page all kind of lives in our server routes. Um, of course, what's displayed on the front end um, is uh, in our client, uh, which is what's called a Vite project, uh, which is just a way of uh, a very simple framework for hosting React apps. Uh, but if you go to app.tsx, which is the um, root uh, file for most Vite projects, you can see what we're doing. And uh, we have a router that's kind of like directing users to different paths, um, as well as uh, some other uh, routing sort of infrastructure. Um, but you can see we're importing these different uh, pages from the files in pages. And so if I go to home, like breaking this down, hey, uh, like what's going on here? We have all these divs, we have all these images, the image is actually our book cover. Uh, we have our description, some other details. And if I pick through this and start to understand it and pick it apart, um, you can understand how to change the page and change the details here. Uh, but I'm gonna link this template in the description of this video, uh, which you'll be able to fork and basically um, complete using the Stripe details that I just walked through. So you can copy this, you can create a checkout page for whatever you wanna sell. Um, you can take that a step further. You can start to add user auth. We're gonna do that in a future uh, tutorial, but the point I really want to emphasize here is that um, Agent supports building with Stripe. It supports implementing checkout um, and all kinds of things off the bat. And if you go a step further, if you get clever with the context that you supply to Agent and you work to understand the applications you're building, you can do things like add uh, order fulfillment. You can do things like add recurring subscriptions um, and more advanced functionality that's going to let you build applications that to be frank, I never would have been able to build this uh, six months ago, right? I never would have been able to build this without Replit. And that is what's amazing about building with AI, about building with Agent and Assistant. So again, I'm Matt with Replit. This has been how you can implement Stripe checkout with order fulfillment using Agent, as well as a template for getting started doing just that. Um, but until next time, uh, keep building, keep shipping, um, and I'll catch you later. Peace.